All right. I've, I've been sitting watching everything from right center stage, and I'm going, I'm going to line up with my umbrella. There we go. Hey, I want to give a shout out to the extroverts in the crowd. Can I hear you, the extroverts? <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. Introverts, I want to give you permission to not shout. All right. Gotcha. You're welcome. You're welcome. I myself am an introvert, and with, that's a, a spell, capital I, N T J. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I gain power from being alone. I, uh, I recharge my batteries uh, with solitude. And I want to share with you briefly today how I allowed my personality and in some respect my introversion to upset my career path and who I had to become to reset that path. In the spirit of launch out, I want to uh, now replace the words termination, fire, uh, being let go, and forced resignation with the phrase involuntary launch. We good with that? Okay. So for me, of course, an involuntary launch is that unexpected ending of a job, however it happened. Now let me use that in a sentence for you. Since college, Brett has had seven career jobs and six involuntary launches. <laughs> it's true. Now, following each of my involuntary launches, I look for what it was that kept drawing me back to these toxic workplaces. I, I sought what was missing relationally from one boss and hoped to find it in my next boss. I, I thought my life would change by changing my setting and the characters in my story. But everywhere I went, I found myself in the same situation. Complaints fueled discord and established walls between, between relationships. And blaming left me blind to my shortcomings. And resentment left me deaf to instruction. And for the longest part of my 13 years on full-time church staff, I couldn't figure out why they kept asking me to leave. Now, while I can say that I wasn't completely at fault with every involuntary launch. I had overlooked the most important common denominator in every one of those situations. It was me. Now, I'm thankful for the involuntary launches, some of them, because I honestly don't know whether I would have been able to launch to my next dream possibility without, without the shove. As I reviewed this talk with my wife, she noted that where I became most passionate was in the second half. The first half was about doing, but I'm more passionate about becoming, about who you're becoming. Because I know that once we become the right people, we'll be more likely to do the right things, and then we will be able to achieve our dreams. So I want to share with you three things that have awakened in me, or I should say are awakening in me to become more of the person I desire to be. Care and involvement. Full-time ministry. The first is to be personable. As I said, as an introvert, I gravitate towards solitude and quiet, but that's not where the rest of the world lives. I mean, for me to be personable is to move past where I'm comfortable, where I want to be, and reach out to where others are. Being personal means to authentically connect and, and be interested in someone else. Being personable is not the same thing as being liked. It's the extension of yourself to another that allows them to feel favor, blessing, and value. So, I smile first. I extend my hand first. And yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's still uncomfortable. But the question I have to ask myself is, do I have compassion enough for someone else to be personable even if they won't like me? The second thing that I'm bringing into my life is to be ordered. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about being organized. It means that I simply plan to succeed. 
The most successful people I know are the ones who keep their word. And the easiest thing we can do to keep our word is to show up on time. The best way to show up on time is to put your calendar in order. And the best way to put your calendar in order is to immediately write down your appointments as they're made. Now, I used to blame my moody musician personality for the lack of order in my life. And it wasn't until I realized that I'm, I wasn't fighting a personality trait. I was fighting discipline. It's simple to do. It's simple not to do. But I know that there is nothing worse than a missed opportunity because I thought I would remember to write it down later. The question I need to bring into my life is who, what do I need to put in order now so I can keep my word then? The third thing is to be proficient. And if you notice, it spells pop. Just saying. The third thing I've learned is to be proficient, to refine the skills I need to achieve what's next for me. And I strive to absorb everything that I can to move my dream forward. Even now, books, podcasts, blogs, film, TED Talks, Kevin Buchanan's Periscope. I take advantage of the margins of my day. And I want to encourage you while you're driving to listen. The 30 minutes between your favorite show and Jimmy Fallon, read. Even going to the restroom, and I know that that's gross. <laughs> but it's a chance for you to take something in, not just put something out. <laughs> and don't loan me your book when you're done. You see, if we're not prepared to make our dream happen now, it probably won't happen. In preparing this speech, for example, I did it while I was making ice pops for you. It takes me about five minutes to prepare a batch to freeze. It takes about 20 minutes for the freezing process to, to finish. The first eight minutes of that 20, I'm, pre -pack I'm packaging the previous batch. That leaves me 12 minutes to practice a 12-minute speech. I got so good at packaging stuff that I, got, I ended up with 13 and a half minutes to practice. It was awesome. <laughs> it was great. But the question is, where's your 12 minutes for you to become proficient? Take a chunk of time. Because I believe that God is... God's not going to supernaturally charge an unpleasant, chaotic, incompetent dreamer like I was. When we're responsible for what we can do, we open the door for the divine to take control. You see... I can be personable, but that's not the same thing as having God's favor. I met a reporter downtown because I've had so much press coverage since April. I've been on the news six times, not just this past week. I've been on the front page of the paper twice. I've been in four freaking Local publication periodicals since April. You know what? You know what? Personable means is me treating you kindly while you're buying an ice pop. That's favor. Do you see the difference? And I can be ordered, but it's not the same thing as having divinely orchestrated circumstances. I was going to a regular pop stop and met a reporter who wanted to do a follow-up interview. The building where we stood, she said, I've been trying to talk to the owner of that building for two months. I said, oh, okay, would you like to buy a pop? She... 
as the interview progressed, a city councilman walked by and, and we exchanged pleasantries and business cards. Five minutes later, the mayor came walking a, around the corner. And I know it looks like I'm setting up a joke. A councilman, a mayor, and a priest walk into a bar. <laughs> it's not like that. The mayor walks around and he says, I'm glad you're here. And I believe in what you're doing. Within the next five minutes, a guy named Ray comes shuffling some papers, extends his hand, and introduces himself. Hey, I'm in, my name is Ray. I said, hey, Ray, <laughs> would you like to buy a pop? <laughs> <coughs> he said, um, yeah, you know, I think I'll, I, I'll probably buy some for the office. And he walked in the door. And just before he got in, the reporter said, are you Ray Chan? And he said, yeah, yeah, I am. She said, I've been trying to meet with you for two months. When we order our lives, sometimes the divinely orchestrated circumstances overflow, not just for ourselves in meeting a city councilman and the mayor, but they overflow and bless other people as well. And I can be proficient, but it's not the same thing as having wisdom from heaven. Last week, I was asked to do pops for a gay wedding. And I wasn't sure what to do. I consulted with a Christian brother, a businessman. And we agreed that we would pray, over, uh, pray about that over the weekend. And then I would call him on Monday morning. When I called him, he said, do you have any questions left unanswered about what you should do? And I said, I only have one question. And I've got to answer it. What would love do? I wasn't thinking on that line. I was thinking self-preservation. But love is more powerful. You see, when we do our part, when we take the responsibility that we can... The divine is then allowed a channel through which to work amazing things. Can you just imagine with me for a moment, what would our world look like if we took our focus off what we want and put it on who we're becoming? What would it be like for us to allow the divine a channel through which to work in and through us? You see, this is what I needed to hear more than 20 years ago. And honestly, I don't know whether I would have had the humility to hear, understand, and apply it. But I have felt compelled to share it with you. Because I hope that together we can launch to a higher level of personal responsibility and positive impact in our world. Thank you.